I fell in love with marketing when I was 12 years old. During that time, I was living in Gujarat, India. Any Indians in the house? A couple? Woohoo! Well, one day, my father, short Indian man with a gorgeous smile, comes to me and says, Meenal, we are going to move to the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so, we packed away our life, our bags, and we flew right across to the U.S. Virgin Islands. And like many of us do when we move to a new place, my parents decided that they are going to go ahead and throw a welcome party to get to know the neighbors in the area. Well, this wasn't just an average dinner party. This was a cricket match. And a cricket match, like the Super Bowl, versus West Indies and India. It was insane. I still remember all the commotion happening during that day. I remember the ice being crushed as my you know, family was making pina coladas, the smell of garam masala as my mom was making her favorite samosas. And I remember all the commotion, 30 people in this tiny two-bedroom apartment, and there was no place to sit, and I was in this corner getting super excited, getting really energized, because my favorite part was going to come up. You see, just like the Super Bowl, the Indian cricket match has ads and commercials. So this commercial comes on. It's a commercial of a flat screen TV. And it starts by showing us zoomed in on this man's face. He was crying. He has tears coming down his eyes. The second shot shows us where he is. So he's sitting in his living room. You can see that he's sitting on his couch. The flat screen TV is over there. And whatever he's watching on the TV, we can't see that yet but it's making him cry. And then the third shot comes on. Do you know what he was watching? It was an onion being chopped. The man was reacting to an onion being chopped on that commercial. How brilliant. That's the day I fell in love with marketing. So I ask you today, how are your patients reacting to you? What are the chopped onions in your practice? And how are you relaying that message? A really cool way of doing that is, I'm sure you've guessed it, is videos. Because that's what we are going to be talking about today. In fact, according to Cisco, there is going to be, by 2020, there is going to be 80% of the content online is going to be videos. I guess malfunctions happen just like this. So we're going to continue either way. But when we have a lot of videos, what we don't have to, we, when we don't have to practice, when we don't have to preach, it becomes even better. How many of you in this room are doing videos? Awesome. How many of you in this room are doing recorded videos? Wonderful. How many of you in this room have tried live videos on a desktop? A couple people. And how many of you have done videos on a mobile device? So I did a little experiment. And in my experiment, I started a show called Marketing and Mocktails with Manal. So when I started it, I recorded the videos, I put in my captions, and everything was working great. And I was getting some engagement. You know, I'll post the video later up, and I'll say, hey, guys, in this video, I'm discussing X, Y, and Z. Some engagement, sure. Then I said, why am I doing this? Because, you know, every time I went online on Facebook, when somebody went live, Facebook actually told me that they are live. How many of you have noticed when you get a pop-up saying somebody's live? Do you get the same pop-up when somebody posts something? No, you don't because the platform wants you to use the videos. So what I said is, you know what? I'm not going to go ahead and record videos. I'm just going to go live. So I started going live on my desktop. And as I was going live on my desktop, I had some comments coming in. I was telling people, where are you from? Tell me who you're watching. Tell me, tell me. You know, give me a hi. What's going on? And I got some engagement. And then I switched over to going live on a mobile phone. Can anybody tell me what the difference is between a desktop and a mobile phone? I'm sorry? Your location. Your location. What else? 
The people who have gone live on their phones, what does a phone app on a Facebook do when you go live? It gives you options, right? It shows you filters. It gives you karaoke things. It tells you to do everything you can to gain engagement. So I started doing live videos, and I would start with a filter. And in my filter, I would put you know, something crazy up. I'll do a song. I'll start my video with doing a little dance. I'll do something and get engagement up and up and up. In fact, my engagement on my live videos went up by 60% just because I switched from doing a desktop to a live video. And that was a lot more higher engagement than doing recorded videos. So while videos are going to be 80% of the content online in the next three months, and 88% of people spend more time on a website with a video, according to Forbes. So you no longer have the choice to say, should I be using videos? What you should be asking yourself today is, how am I going to use videos? And I'm going to give you a few tips here. The first tip that I really want you to focus on is you do need a strategy. We, you know, we heard Jack this morning talk about a strategy. We also heard Blake talk about how important it is to be authentic and connecting to people. Those are some very important things. But here are some ways to create a live strategy. The first thing is, what is the goal for your video? Every video is different. You have videos on Google. You have videos on your website. You have them on Facebook. You have them on Instagram. You have them on YouTube. What network is going to get you in front of people? After Google, what is the second largest search engine? YouTube. Who owns YouTube? Google. Now, YouTube is a video platform, right? But Facebook's most current, most current trending content is videos. I see this as a mistake happening all the time, and somebody will take a YouTube link and post it onto Facebook. Now, that's like giving away prime real estate on Facebook platform. The logarithms are saying, no, 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 no. We are not going to help you show that out to organic reach. We are going to make sure that you put a video directly on Facebook. So you need to know your platforms. If you were to do a video and you put it up on YouTube, then you have to make sure there is a SEO strategy attached to that video. Because YouTube is the second largest search engine. So that means when somebody goes in and says, what are dental implants? Your video needs to show up. It will only show up if there is an SEO strategy attached to it. If you were to take that video, you can go ahead and put it onto your website, because you can embed it directly onto your website. Make sense? If you were to use a video for Facebook, if you want to create an engaging video, a fun video, and you want to create that on Facebook, you're going to directly go live on Facebook and do that video. Now, when you do these videos, and once you know what you're going to do, I want you to focus on a couple of things. You know, every time we do a video, we are always about, let's get the perfect lighting, get our hair done, put some makeup on, put a nice dress, put my heels on, and look picture perfect. And while that is important, it's not required. If you think about it, all the viral videos and all the trendy videos, they just happen on accident. Somebody's having fun or having a Chewbacca laugh. Somebody can dance and they just start dancing. Those are the videos that go viral. While having a light, making sure that you're presentable, all of that helps. The one thing, the one thing that you absolutely need, that you absolutely require in a video is authenticity, especially if you're going to do these videos on social media. I don't want a video where you're sitting there and saying, hi, my name is Dr. X, Y, and Z, and I work in this practice, and we like to make all our patients feel comfortable, and we have eight to five hours. Everyone has that. All your competition has that. Instead, share those humanizing, the imperfect stories that you have, just like, well, just like the story I shared with you when I started this morning, sitting on you know, a tiny floor on the couch, falling in love with marketing. That story is going to help me connect with you way more than me coming up here and saying, hi, my name is Minal Sepp, but I'm a marketing strategist, and I do social media coaching, and I can talk to you, blah, 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 blah. That's an infomercial. That's what your website is for. You are in complete control of your brand, and your brand is no longer 
your logo, your colors, the way your sign looks. If Amazon was not called Amazon, will you still shop on it? Yes. If you were to go to Starbucks and Starbucks was called something else, will you still go to Starbucks? Yes. Would it matter if Starbucks logo was not green and it was red? No. Just like that, when you start focusing on your branding and you say, I'm going to spend all this time on getting the perfect logo, the perfect, you know, the, the perfect color scheme in my website, yes, that's sure, it's all helpful, that's wonderful. But at the end of the day, your brand is what others are saying about you. And luckily, you are in complete control of that. So when you decide to say, what kind of video am I going to do, I want you to go down to your why. I am a dental hygienist as well. Here's an example that comes from a clinical point of view, all right? I'm a dental hygienist, and I could come up here and I can say, hi, my name is Manal Sam, but I'm a dental hygienist. I went to Rutgers University, and I did dental hygiene course, and I've been seeing patients for this many amount of years, and I'm a pediatric dental hygienist, and all my patients love me. <laughs> or, or I could tell you this. As you know, I grew up in India. And in India, there is not the best oral health system. I'm sure you have seen the videos of guys pulling out teeth on the streets on Facebook. One of my favorite things to do is to laugh. I love to laugh. I love to smile. Now, when I look at my photos from the time I was a little girl, I am not laughing that hard. I'm not smiling that big. Because I had holes in my teeth. I had blackness around my teeth, and I was ashamed to smile. The reason I am a pediatric dental hygienist today, a pediatric dental hygienist today, is because I don't want any child to ever feel that they can't smile as big as they want. Which story connected with you? Was it the, I'm a hygienist and I went to Rutgers? Or was it the, I went to India and this is why I'm a hygienist? Which one? The second one. That's your brand, that's your content, and you can do a video to show you exactly and to show the people that you want to connect with to do that. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of a controversial topic here, and I'm going to share something with you, and you may not like me for it, but I'm going to share it. We are in a world where everybody wants you to be different. You have to be different. What's your unique factor? You have to be different. What's your unique factor? I disagree. I completely disagree. What I want you to focus on instead is to find a common ground. Just imagine the politics of this country if you can find a common ground. If you have your target market, if you have your target patients you want to connect to, whether you are a specialist or whether you're a GP practice, you need to know who you want to connect with and then create your content to connect with them. If I was standing here today, you know, I'm a marketing strategist, and while I'm also a dental hygienist, and while most of my clients are in the dental field, I do have commercial clients. If I were to do that in commercial clients, and if I was sitting in front of you today, standing in front, and talking to you about jewelry and diamonds, is that going to matter to you? No, because you are not that clientele. You are in the dental field, so what am I doing? I am sharing my past, my stories about being a hygienist, about being a dental marketing strategist with you today. Because that's me finding my common ground. So don't worry about being different. Nobody wants you to be different. Everybody's different. Everybody's so different that it's now common to be different. Instead, find that common ground in your videos and say, I am trying to attract moms. And I am going to do sleep apnea treatment. Okay, I want to talk about sleep apnea. And I want to attract these kind of people. So in my video, I am not going to talk about how amazing sleep apnea is because people don't even know what it is. They don't even know it exists. And they don't even know why a dentist should be talking to them about sleep apnea. Instead, share the story about growing up. Or instead, if you have somebody inside your practice who has struggled with it, have them share that story. That is content that converts. That is video that converts. Now, if you were to take that piece of video, the next step that I want you to focus on, specifically focus on, is to make it accessible. If you have a video and you go through all this trouble and you create a content strategy and you figure out you want YouTube or social media platforms and you're like, Manal, you made me cry on that video and I'm crying now and this video is out there and people are commenting on it. 
you have to interact back. You know, a video allows you to be in people's homes, in their conference rooms, in their practices, in their pockets, in their bedrooms. Well, maybe not there. But a video allows you to be in front of an audience. So if you're going to take all this time to get in front of them, you need to interact. Can anybody tell me what is the highest currency of engagement on Facebook? Is it likes, when you get likes? No, what is it? It's comments. So you know when you go onto Facebook and somebody's birthday was last week, but you keep seeing the same post over and over and over again? The reason you're seeing that post is because people are commenting on it. The way Facebook's logarithm works is that it has a hierarchy. You have the likes, which are great. Did you know that the hearts matter more than likes? Because you don't like it, you love it. So when you're doing the live video, do you think it's a strategy for you to include? Send us some hearts, it's our first live video, we are really nervous, send us some hearts. Because now you're leveraging Facebook's logarithm. Then you can ask them and say, tell us where you're watching from, who you are, what are you doing right now, are you listening, can you hear me, okay, blah, 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 blah. Now you're forcing them to comment. And as you're commenting, guess what's happening? You're going ahead and using Facebook's logarithm to say, hey, this po post is pretty damn engaging. We are gonna keep showing it to everybody. In that same way, what you can do a little bit better so if you're already commenting, if you're already getting all these people to comment and do things, what you can do a little bit better, and this is a stretch, but I know you could do it, because we had uh, you know, Dr. Brian Harris talk about this earlier this morning. How about having that patient share that video for you? And like I said, while the lights and the perfectness is necessary, no. What's necessary is being authentic. If you had a patient whose life has changed because of the work you did, there is no harm of you in going live. Now, a couple of things when you decide to go live, the best way for you to make sure that you're leveraging the platform. Here are some steps, and you're gonna write these down. I see everybody's pen and paper, perfect. Number one, I want you to announce when you're going to go live. Why is that? Because if you don't announce it, you are just hoping that somebody is live at the time you go live and they're going to interact with you. So announcing it makes all the difference. I go ahead and I have my show Marketing and Mocktails with Manal. That's on Thursday night. And I announce and I say, hey guys, I'm going to go live at this time on this day. The way you can figure out when to go live is easy. Like uh, Blake said earlier, Facebook page, Instagram pages actually have insights that tell you when your fans and your followers are online. So go online at that time. If you're going to go online, you're going to announce it. Here's a pro tip. Make a Facebook event out of it. You know how we have the events tab on your page? Because every time you create a Facebook event and you invite people to that event, what happens? They get a notification saying you're going to be going to this event. Now you can call your event Facebook Live, X, Y, and Z, whatever Q&A you're answering, or you're doing a live video of a patient, or you're going around your practice doing whatever you're doing. But creating an event will now give them a notification on top of you announcing it. And when you go live, I want you to come up with a strategy. You have to stay consistent. The first time you do live is gonna suck. It's gonna be horrible, you're gonna hate it. I mean, I have made all the mistakes I can. I had coffee on me. At one point, I had my dress inside out. <laughs> and I had my team messaging me saying, Manal, your dress, and I'm like, I know, isn't it gorgeous? And they're like, no, it's inside out. They're messaging me while I am live on Facebook. Oh yeah, this happened. And there has been everything that could go wrong. I speak four languages, and at one point, I converted in, from English to another language I made up in my head and kept talking, because I didn't know how to shut up, and I was live, and I was too nervous. That's all going to happen. So here's another pro tip. You know how you have your own timeline, not your business page, but your personal timeline? And when you decide to share a post, it gives you an option to share it with friends, make it public, all that good stuff. There's an option that says, only me. You can go live for only yourself. And you can practice it and practice it and practice it. And only you will see it. Now, even if then you are like, no, Facebook is watching me, Manal, people are gonna see it, I may make a mistake. I get that, I get the fear. Again, I have gone through it all. Create a Facebook group. 
you only need two people to have a Facebook group. So have your significant other, have a team member, have somebody you trust. Create a private Facebook group and then practice your live, your videos, your content directly on there. Now, I can't go through all of this. My time is running out. Couple of announcements. Our table is right there that says go live. So come and unleash your inner awesomeness with me at your, at your show. I will help you with the live videos. I am Minal Sampet. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.